All right, let's go ahead and take a look at an application of limits. And the application that we'll look at are asymptotes. Now, the reason why we're going to take a look at a particular application of limits is because at this point, one, you know how to evaluate limits algebraically, and we've also made the connection with the information that is provided to us by evaluating limits algebraically and its relationship to the graph of f of x itself. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the three basic types of asymptotes that we have. And there are more, but there are three that we need to be concerned with. One is the vertical asymptote, two is the horizontal asymptote, and three is the oblique asymptote. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and describe this way so that we can kind of follow through with what's happening here, and we'll go through each one of these separately. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a vertical asymptote. Now, we're all very familiar with those, but let's just go ahead and kind of describe it once again, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Remember that a vertical asymptote is a restriction, is a visual representation of a restriction in the domain of f of x. So in other words, f of x cannot cross the vertical asymptote because for that particular value of x, f of x does not exist. So if we go ahead and take a look at a graphical example, this is what we said a, a vertical asymptote looks like. Let's say, for example, that if I were to go ahead and substitute a into my function f of x, and if I come up with something that is undefined, then notice that what I have is I have this dotted line vertically going up and down. Notice that I put it in red so that we can remember that it's never going to, the function is never going to cross it. And notice that what happens is as x approaches this value, it shoots up to positive or negative infinity or both. Okay? Now, from a calculus perspective then, we can actually go ahead and say then that as the limit, the, li the limit as x approaches a, in this case over here, of f of x, is going to be going to positive or negative infinity. In this case, it's actually going to positive infinity. And because of that, this is actually going to be considered a vertical asymptote. So the description, the graph, and here's what the calculus interpretation of a vertical asymptote would be. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is a horizontal asymptote. Now, this is slightly different, uh, in fact, very different from a vertical asymptote, because a horizontal asymptote is not a restriction at all. A horizontal asymptote is a tendency of the graph, okay, very far from the origin, to approach a particular value, okay, range value. So f of x can cross a horizontal asymptote. And if we go ahead and take a look at this particular graphical example, let's say, for example, this is the horizontal line y is equal to a. Notice that what happens with her function is that as I get further and further and further away from the origin, this function is approaching closer and closer and closer to the value of a itself. And it seems as if it will almost always be there. Okay. Just by taking a look at this function, it seems that there will always be a little bit of up and down motion, but generally speaking, the tendency is towards A. So if we go ahead then and take a look at what we want to write in terms of a calculus approach to this particular situation and this particular behavior for a function, we can say then that as the limit, the limit as x approaches infinity, so notice it's very far away from the origin. Now this could be positive or negative infinity, but just let's simplify it to say x is approaching infinity, of f of x is actually going to be equal to this y value, which is called a. So there you go. That is basically what we have for a horizontal asymptote. Here's a graphical representation and how we could go ahead and describe that algebraically using limit notation. All right. And the last one that we have are the oblique asymptotes. Again, an oblique asymptote is once again a tendency, but the difference between an oblique and a horizontal asymptote is that the tendency is not towards a particular value, but it's a, part, a tendency toward a particular line. In this case, this of course being a horizontal line, that one being a non-horizontal line. So what we can do then again is notice that what's happening is that we're actually approaching a particular line as x goes very, very far from the origin, and notice that it's going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to this dotted, uh, dotted line right there. So what we can say then, from a calculus approach then, is that if I take the limit as x approaches infinity, because notice again, we're talking about values of x very, very far away from the origin, 
and we take that limit as x approaches infinity of the particular function f of x, it is actually going to be approaching the value given by a particular line, and in this case it's represented by that dotted green line. So of course notice that a cannot be equal to zero because if a was equal to zero we would come out to the horizontal asymptote situation. So there you go, we have three basic asymptotes, which is an application of limits, here are our applications of limits and our interpret calculus interpretation using limits so that we can now go ahead and describe asymptotes not only as a description, not only looking at it as a graph, but also writing it in very, very mathematical, technical mathematical language. Okay, and we'll go ahead in class, we'll take a look at how uh, some of these functions that will be given in the textbook can actually be analyzed using the limits to go ahead and show and prove for a, fa for a fact that particular functions have either vertical, horizontal, or oblique asymptotes. Okay, so we'll take a look at that when we get in class the next time that we meet, and we'll see how some of these different interpretations of asymptotes via the calculus approach can be applied to specific problems. Okay, so we'll take a look at it then. Until next time, see you later. Bye.